Hello everyone and welcome back for this new episode of Coding Design System with George. Hey George, how are you? Hello Mads, what's up? Hey, I'm well, I'm well. I'm In fact, I'm preparing a lot of new stuff, new talks and new content for uh, upcoming conferences um, by the end of the month. So, um, so stay tuned, some online and some in person, so it would be great. Um, see you in Ticker in my Bruxelles. Um, next uh next uh, month i guess something like that mm-hmm. but we're gonna have the dates uh, soon but yeah today um today we have a new guest on the stream um with ben holmes to talk to you about about um uh, islands architecture and a lot of great stuff related to um to uh partial hydration and so on hey hey ben how are you i'm doing great how are y'all doing actually i already shared yeah, uh, yeah, super excited to be here. Still well, still well. <laughs> still well, good. All right. Make sure to welcome, happen. Ben. Yeah, welcome on the show. This is, this is um, really great to have you because um, I, I discovered you, um, I, I don't know, a few months ago when um, when I, I started to dig into, um, you know, the islands, patterns, and so on. So um, so you're a web developer and you are. Um, you're working a lot of different projects for um, for a while, but um, you started a project named Slinkity. Um, for for um, how long? How long have you been working on it? Yeah, feels like a lifetime. I started working on it unofficially. Um, started the pandemic actually around March when I was just playing around with my personal site and trying to come up with a build tool, kind of built around Eleventy, in order to make it. First off, interactive, like bring in some components and see how they work. And at the time, also looking into like a single page app story, which I'm still very interested in as like an islands architecture, like next chapter. Um, But yeah, it eventually evolved into publishing a package a year later, eventually, because I wasn't super comfortable with publishing NPM. It was the first package I ever published, to be honest. Um, And then it turned into, you know, how do you manage a monorepo? How do you manage an open source project? How do you get people in the community excited on Twitter and also through just forums and helping people out? Um, So it was definitely a a quick journey where I had to learn a lot of things up front, but it only officially started back in August. So um, we were still pretty early on and working towards a 1.0 sometime this year. Oh, great. And are you, are you working alone on Slinkity or um, how many people are contributing to the project? Yeah, uh, actually pulling that into our homepage now. Uh, we have, I think, 18 contributors total. Great. Uh, some are recurring. Uh, would definitely shout out like Ben Myers, who has uh, contributed a lot of accessibility audits and just understanding like, yeah, I, if you know him, you're not surprised. Where uh, <laughs> yeah, we've for sure. noticed a few things where, you know, when you can statically build everything up front, you can be great about ARIA roles and uh, semantic HTML, making sure everything looks right there. So a lot of recurring contributions from him. Uh, Thomas Semler has been working a lot on our documentation as well. The whole docs redesign that we launched. Uh, those are both people in the 11 community as well. Um, and Anthony, who is a co-maintainer, uh, Campolo, uh, he has uh, been su- he's almost like an internet historian in the islands architecture space. He knows about every project in existence and contributed to Redwood for a bit. So learned a lot of things from him. Uh, and otherwise, it's just been community driven. No other like uh, I guess co maintainers or anything other than Anthony who is uh, just jumping in uh, issues and triaging them. But yeah, in general, uh, it's been myself leading it and marching it towards a 1.0, but getting community input as much as possible. Oh, sounds great. A lot of friends in it because um, because in the in the people you mentioned, there was a few of them that we had in the stream before. So, um, so that's great. We are between friends, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of just friends recommending other friends of like, you should come on the show. You should see what it's like. Yeah, that's uh, it. Yeah. yeah, a lot of familiar faces. We need to invite uh, Antonina. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, he's he's been everywhere. I almost see him as like my agent in a way, where he's like just knows so many people and he just loves sharing. Like you should go on this and this, and it's like, oh my god, you're so. Yeah. You know, this is exactly what is um, really exciting me about open source project and open source communities yeah. right now. Because when you're in in a, in a, in a I don't know how to say that a trendy, let's say a trendy topic like I don't know island patterns or or um, or SSR or um, or static site generation or so on. You're you're meeting the same persons working on different projects, and we are just exchanging our experience and skills and 
helping people to improve the products. And, um, and yeah, that's great. That's, that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, so um, we mentioned Slinkity, but maybe, maybe we have to, to dig a bit um, in, 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 into it. And um, could you just explain it a bit, what it is? And we mentioned it when we, we were with um, Daclis and Manage stream um, two or three weeks ago, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I'm curious about your, your very own definition of Slinkity and what it is. Yes. Uh, so Slinkity has definitely evolved a bit. Um, <clears throat> because right now we're working towards just making it an 11D plugin to sort of reduce confusion of like, uh, now that 11D supports custom dev servers and such, uh, we're able to bolt on as just a way to extend your 11D site to bring in um, client-side components. So if you want to use React, Vue, or Svelte in your 11D site, both to make page templates and also insert components into other page templates with short codes, uh, we offer that. And it's also just the starter to bring Vite into your 11D project. So if you're, familiar, if you're familiar with that tool and you've been thinking, I want to combine these two things, excuse me, uh, Slinkity is definitely the way to like bridge those two gaps and easily insert like style sheets that are using SAS. We can auto compile your SAS for you um, or less or CSS modules, everything that you want automatically handled, Slinkity will be there to help you out. That's great. And it sounds familiar because this is, Definitely the kind of technology where um, pushing and, and helping people to be involved when working with a, with a design system and designing external component to be reused in your final application. So um, it's, it's definitely the kind of tool that um, help people to build final apps based on an existing design system or, or a thing like this. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely what we are, uh, we are looking to interact with. And um, I heard that a few weeks ago, you finally join the Astro project um, because working on CKD at first, that's it? That is the reason, yeah. Uh, they had actually, it, there had been a lot of sort of uh, cross-pollination of ideas. I had talked with some of the Astro core maintainers on like, how did you get renderers to work? How did you get React to load alongside Preact in the same project? Something that is still like just witchcraft to me. Um, but yeah, learned a lot from them. And also, they're so open with community RFC calls where like once a week, they will have an event in their Discord to, uh, well, in our Discord now, uh, in order to bring in the community and discuss ideas before that they are, before they're given consensus in order to be pursued as like an Astro Core project. So hopped in there, learned what everyone was working on, and slowly discovered like Astro is definitely like the... It, it's definitely the most focused on Island's architecture, where since they own the templating language, they can own the developer experience, where since you're using the Astro file and you can maintain it, you can have IntelliSense for all of the Astro globals. You don't have to import types to understand how it works. It's just there in your editor. And when you import components, you also get autocomplete uh, warnings about props that are required but not being passed, um, and also ways to hydrate those components. So I think Astro is like sort of 100% the island's architecture vision. And Slinkity is a way to sort of bring Astro to your existing 11 projects. If you're not able to migrate to Astro or you want to insert it into a site that you already have, or like I've already written my entire site in Nunjux, I should be able to just import a component straight into my Nunjux or into my Markdown or use React View and Svelte to make the page itself. So it's more flexibility uh, with maybe 80% the developer experience that Astro is able to offer but because it's bringing these tools with zero upfront cost of switching off of 11D, I think it's going to be like a good fit for a lot of people that want to stick with the workflow that they have. Hmm. That's great. So, so, so finally, you're, you're working on both projects at the same time and, and exchanging ideas and, and bringing some, some concept from one to another. That's generally it, yeah. Um, and I know that brings a little bit of confusion on like, well, which project are you focusing most on? And at the moment, definitely with the Astro 1.0 push, that has taken like a ton of effort in order to get out and really excited with like the week of announcements we have going on right now. Um, and with Slinkity, the goal is to get it to 1.0 and bring in serverless support because 11D serverless is a feature. You should be able to bring your components to 11D serverless as well. Um, and belong beyond 1.0, I'm just reading the burnout meter to see if I can continue supporting both. And if it turns out like I want to pass it on to a new maintainer that's more interested in maintaining Slinkity post V1, uh, I'm open to exploring that. So just want to be very transparent 
on like where my focus is and the amount of time that I can devote. But I definitely want to lead Slinkity into a 1.0 so people can use it with all of 11 these existing features. Wow, that's really exciting. That's really exciting because um, it totally rings a bell. You know, I, I'm, I'm definitely um, a um, big defender of the uh, KISS, um, KISS concept, you know, keep it simple. And, and um, I do like to use 11 just to, to power my, my very own websites, but I, I still, um, still be frustrated not to be able to uh, have external client components and, and custom little, little bit of components. And you can't always rely on web components by choice or by design or whatever. So um, I tried a bit of things, um, even in Backlight, our, our design system editor with a, a starter kit from Nanjax, exporting macros to be able to reuse the component in macros in Nanjax. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. but um, definitely being able to reuse external components with advanced framework languages like, like Vue or Svelte or React. This is just extraordinary, you know? So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a really great project, you know? Yeah, it's wild because like Eleventy is so extensible these days where you can just have a custom template for everything. And that's partially what we did. Now that they've opened that API, we just have custom template for JSX or Svelte or Vue. So if you want to replace a Nunjux route with something else, um, you can just go ahead and do that as long as we provide the custom template. And then short codes, are, of course, are like, I mean, it's just HTML. You could do anything in a short code if you really feel like it. So mm -hmm. we've kind of used and abused that model in order to get you to use components with short codes. Uh, and I think a pretty clean way if you're using like Nunjux and Nunjux within your markdown as well. Um, though Liquid is also supported. I want to mention that. Yeah, right. That's cool. <clears throat> and this has been the, actually the, the plugins, the templates plugins have been supported by Eleventh t recently, right? Yeah, they um, were a lower level API that had existed for a while. They mm. actually had a view plugin that had been released, I think, last year. Yes. And at the time, I just poked through the source code to see what it's doing and then replicated it to do it with some other templates. And now finally, it's like actually documented with the 1.0 release. So if you want to write your own, now is like a nicer time to do it for sure. Um, but yeah, it's it's been around for a while and now it's pretty stable to do whatever you want, including like SCSS as a template if you want to go that route or just let Vite handle it if you happen to use Vite. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's talk a bit about design systems and, and how we could uh, mix it in, in, a, in a final application. And um, I, I want to start with um, the island patterns once again. Could you... Could you um, help our, um, our audience to understand a bit more what is the island pattern and how does it work in um, the final design of an application? Yeah, or just how design systems work in general. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess. for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with islands, it's like, I mean, when, when you have like an initial design system, it could be written with any sort of component framework that you want. Uh, design systems that I've worked with in the past were based in React and styled components, where everything is just one NPM package. You import the components that you need, and they're stylable via props. Um, and then you might have even components for layout as well, like a design system grid component or um, a flexbox component I've seen. Um, and to use it with islands, I mean, the thought is that every component is an island of some sort. So you can just import it at the top of the file, however that import works. Um, in Astro, you would import it just like as a JavaScript module, import the component. And in Slinkity, you would use a shortcode where you just put a shortcode in the middle of the file with the file path inside of it. And it'll look inside your includes folder to go grab that component. Um, and then it'll hydrate onto the page, however you choose to hydrate that component. So you can take those design system primitives, you can splice them onto the page. And if you want to opt into using JavaScript with those design system pieces, you can throw a little hydrate flag on there to say, I need JavaScript state management for this piece. Like a good example I think of is like, if you're using layout components like Grid and Flexbox, you don't need to hydrate those because they're just little CSS wrappers in order to make things look nice. But if you're using something like a button with a click handler, then you would opt into hydrating just the button from your design system. So you can be really smart about like which parts of that design system bundle actually get sent to the user and which parts can be left on the server side when you're generating the page. So it's a ton of flexibility, and I think it maps onto like the component design system mindset really well. And Slinky and Astro are both great options for doing so. Mm. Yeah, I see. 
Do you have any kind of rules that you use when you, you use a design system in an application when it comes to hydrate the components? Or how do you decide when you want to hydrate them and do you want to run them on the server side or only on the client side and so on? Yeah, rule. I mean, it's so early days, I'm not sure. Like if there's a set rule other than don't hydrate until something is not behaving how you expect. And then when it is, then go ahead and throw a hydrate flag on there. And um, most of the time, you can just throw like a hydrate yes or no. Like it's no by default, um, both in Astro and Slinkity. It will just server render. And then if you need to opt in, you would throw hydrate load or something like that to say when the client loads, immediately load the component. Um, and there are more nuanced cases where it's like maybe I have a hamburger button that only shows up on mobile, which is common for navigation. Um, for that, you could use a media query inside of your hydration mode to say only hydrate this slide out menu when we're on mobile. Because on desktop, there is no slide out menu, so we don't really care. Um, so you can get really clever with things if you want to. Um, but in general, it's like hydrate yes or no, and then get more specific if you're you know, looking at the performance or looking at areas where it's like, this is below the fold, I could wait to hydrate this. This only happens on mobile, I could wait to hydrate this. Um, it's really just use the least amount possible until you absolutely need it is probably like the safest way to approach things. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's a very great advice. Um, okay. Do you want to dig a, a bit into coding session and see if, if we can code something on, a, on the design and, um, and design system and application part? So Let's see what happens. You... Yeah. Can we uh, can we fire a slinky T on um, on uh, Stack Blitz or, or something like that? Uh, I don't know if we have a Stack Blitz. We have a CLI starter command, um, so okay. you're good to do that. We have npm init slinky Um Let me see how I can do this. I usually always do that on in the browser. So let's uh, try to do something yeah. else here. Actually, if you want to try on Stack Blitz, I made a few tests this afternoon, and to be honest, it works. <laughs> you can run, yeah. you okay. can run Slinky and Eleven on Stack Blitz if you want. Should we try? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I'm pretty sure that there is not um, existing templates, so uh, so we will probably have to do it by hand from scratch. But it's just a few files that we we need to configure. So. Okay. Should I start with uh, just a static? Uh, I need to start with a web container or. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, well, pick, pick just the um, .js one. It would be, it would be enough, I guess. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. So you you have .js environment and so on. Uh, just .js. I I took next. Yeah. Oh, sorry. This yeah. is next. Okay, let's go back. Uh, this one. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Ooh, could we just run npm init slinkity in this guy? Yeah. Yes, it's a bit simulation, but we can do that. So what should, uh, what should we uh, import? Yeah. Uh, well, if you just run npm init slinkity and see what happens, uh, it should generate all the files for us, and then we can install. Like this, right? Yeah. It will throw it in a nested directory, though, so we can just like move it um into the main directory if you want uh just go ahead and do that for now and which one do we want oh, which one we want let's do a bit of view we've been doing react all the time yeah that's okay. great let's <laughs> let's share the log yeah. that's a good idea oh shoot you're supposed to hit space because you can select multiple this happens all the time mm -hmm. uh, but it's easy to install so we'll go ahead and do that like this um, oh, yeah. well, we could make another one. Yeah. <laughs> so what I think it will I cause do? a conflict with, with the one we already have. Space? So, okay, yes. and then I yeah, go so return, like right? Yeah, it'll probably error because, okay, if you delete the, the one we generated and okay. then just do it again. And folks, just, just for the, um, I, I don't want to be too 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 excited about stack blitz and so on but um this is a really good product you know and web containers are in alpha version in firefox so you could run stack blitz web containers in firefox right now so it's um nice. it's just crazy and now what should we do 
Yes. So we have it inside that nested directory there. Uh, we could CD into it and run inside of that guy. And now we can npm install. And that should grab everything that we need. Yeah, for sure. So what, what kind of um, dependency are you using? Because Linkedin is also using Vit uh, as a dev server, that's it? That's correct, yeah. Um, so it's just Slinkd, uh, 11 is a peer dependency, so you install that alongside it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, whatever framework you opt into, by default, we won't ship any frameworks. So it's a pretty light install if you just do like a blank starter. Um, and from there, you just choose the ones that you want. What, uh, what should we do next? Right. So now that we have it, uh, we should be able to run npm start if things go well. Oh, he's going to mm, tell me. You really need that time. product out. Yeah. It's going. Don't know why, because yeah, it's spinning, you know? All right. Mm. What? Upgrade. Oh, you know what? This is because we are trying to run it oh, probably yeah, in a subfolder. But um, from if all the files are in, in the root folder, everything is working well. So, um, but yeah, but here it is. But here it is. So this generates a simple starter with a markdown file as your index, and okay. it plops a view component right in the middle of it. So yeah, if you open up the source folder, it should contain all of your routes. Um, the first one is this view component, and you'll notice the hydrate flag in order to make it interactive. And view page, this is a route built with view. Um, pretty much simple as that. The only interesting piece is the front matter, which is a JavaScript export. So if you want to do like JavaScript functions to compute front matter, that works too. Um, and then deployment is just a markdown file explaining how to deploy to Netlify. So nothing super special there. Okay. And so in this um, in this file somewhere, we have a view component injected here or not at all? Not yet. Yes. Uh, here, uh, it just is, here. No? Yeah, up top. So the syntax is, uh, the, the short code is called component, and it should auto-detect um, which renderer to use based on file extension. So dot okay. view, use view, and then hydrate in order to decide how and when to hydrate the component. Okay. So here, true is a sensible default of just hydrate right away, but we also offer some strings inside of there to like hydrate with a media query and all sorts of fun stuff. Okay, can we have a look at the documentation of Slinkity to explore this? Oh, yeah, for sure. Let's try our SEO. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It's a great name, you know. Easy to, to rank up in the SEO. <laughs> yeah, no one knows what that word is. We're starting to get misspellings as well, because I know some people like using an E in there. Oh, and yeah. started redirecting. <laughs> so, so here are the options we can have through true on client load which is i guess uh when uh the page is loaded uh, yeah those all do the same thing um, okay at this point it's almost kind of overkill oh. to offer all three that's for legacy purposes because it used to be called eager um in 1.0 we'll probably drop eager but client load is meant to mass match how astro works so if you're coming from Astro and you know, oh, I know client load, I want to mm. use that. Uh, okay. You can go ahead and use that over here. On um, component visible, visible or lazy, this is when the component is actually close to be seen in the viewport. Mm -hmm. I guess you tell me if I'm wrong. On client oh, right. idle, this is when the page is loaded and everything is finished and then finally goes and hydrate the component. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we have the on client media. So those, this is what you mentioned where you can only hydrate if we are on mobile or only if we are on desktop and with the different media queries, right? Yep, exactly right. And you support any media query that exists in CSS. It should, yeah, it uses uh, the built-in match media function in your browser. So yeah. it should just take a string that resolves to CSS. Perfect. So if you want to use print and for some reason, uh, you can. And then, 
<laughs> Never come up with a reason. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine to yeah, either a nice. so print 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 print. Print. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's fun. That's really fun. It could be like a, a component that generates something only in JavaScript yeah, and sure. not in SSR. Yeah, something like um, a, um, a table of content or something like this, you know, that is specifically designed for print pages. It could be fun to try to, to, to find something like that. Okay. And known yeah. is by default. Okay. So uh, we should play with this. So one thing uh, which is surprising to me is like we have the slinkity.view as a parameter. Uh, but the file is, is called view page dot view. Yes. Is so this... it's actually, um, that's its own page. So the interesting thing is ah. um, all of your, if you're using short codes to insert components, they'll be inside your includes folder. Okay. So it'll look in there in order to resolve them. And anything outside the includes folder is treated as a route. And so I can do view page here. Yes. And this is my view page. Yep. So, and with front so matter, you can. Yeah. So yeah, it extends uh, 11T with also pages that could be in Vue, in React, or in Svelte. Uh, it, it, those are the three frameworks uh, supported today, is it? Yep. And we throw a hydrate flag on here as well. So you can hydrate the whole page, or you could just use it as a templating language, which is the default, uh, okay. since I know that's how 11D's Vue plugin also works. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let's play a little bit with this. Um, I'm gonna just copy this. Uh, I can't copy. It's not that easy. Oh, really? Uh -huh. <laughs> let's do a new file. You know, keyboard shortcuts so, for the win. Can't believe it. <laughs> we're gonna do uh, backlight view because we love backlight. <laughs> um, and then yeah, I learned about uh, it. It's awesome. And then we can uh, let's see what we can create here. But I think it would be nice to do. Um, oops. Let's say uh, we can do um, just. Oh, sorry. We can just do um, loading. Because this is what the components will be. Uh, and then there is a nitrate props. You need that? That's if you're hydrating the... Uh, oh, I was wondering if we were inside of a page or a component. Uh, so you can receive the hydrate prop if you want to show and hide things depending on the hydrate mode. So oh, if you okay. want to be super clever, like that's actually something we did in here is like hide that button if you're not hydrating because sometimes yes. you might want to use a carousel, but you want to hide the buttons in certain cases. So you can ignore the hydrate prompt if you want to and just not use it, but it's there if you ever need it. Okay, let's do this. So we're loading, and then we're going to say, uh, bear with me. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 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 so I'm gonna do loading. Um, oh, uh, this is not hydrated yet. Let's do this. And so we should be able to go here, go at the bottom of the page because we want to be out of screen. And then we should do, this is how Slinkity should do like component. And then we do backlight.view, is it? Almost .dev. I, I felt it coming. Uh, and you also need uh, percent signs on either side of the shortcode. Oh, yes, of course. Um, yeah, we're actually using Nunjux syntax inside of Markdown, which is configured inside of your uh, config. And then we're going to start with just hydrate to no. As simple as that. Sure. Yeah, you can also omit the hydrate flag if you just don't want hydration, mm. but either works fine. Hmm. I don't see it, but let's uh, make a reload. To see what's going on. There we go. Yeah. Oh. It's you. I'm not sure it works like uh, it, that is reloading automatically, but let's do that if I do I test. We should. We noticed recently um, Vite updated to Vite 2.9 and was noticing some weird svelte behavior this morning, both in Astro and Slinky. 
So I'm not sure if that's trickling into here. <laughs> if you hydrate the component, I've noticed it works better, but it's, it's odd. I don't okay. quite know what's going on with that. So okay. now what we can do, if I'm uh, can do is hydrate this thing on um, on mount, and so. But on mount, uh, um, it's not going to do the trick because on mount it will also be generated on the back end, if I'm not mistaken mm -hmm. from from bit. Uh, let's let's do this. Um, I'm not too sure about the V3 uh, V3 syntax. Uh, this is the new this is the new composition API, is it? That is yes. I honestly just learned about it in order to write these examples, so I'm not the strongest view yeah. person to ask. But <laughs> we we have you covered. Uh, so uh, da, 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 da. heads up, yes, please leave me alone. Oof. Yeah. And then we can, we can go there, get started. And then what we can do is look for uh, on mount. Mm -hmm. There we go. It's the new actually. Um, new hooks so yes, in the life oh, this is what yeah. you want to do. But this is with the setup included. But we can do that. I mean, yeah, that's sure. not a problem. Problem. We can do that. Oh, interesting. Actually, I rely more and more on the script setup tag rather than declaring a you know the setup function in, inside a component. Yeah, it's, it's really powerful. I didn't know that was and, a thing. Yeah. And so we can call this. Um, what did I miss? Yeah, um, as simple as that. And we can call this just. Oh, I see. Yeah. So basically, we got the on mount. We get the ref into uh, the element, and then on mount, we change the value of that simple. We got the value, and then we can do I don't know text uh, content. We can do this. You think? Mm, yeah, it should work. It should work. Yeah. Yes. Assuming it's just like some DOM stuff. It is. And so it is not. <laughs> oh, we haven't hydrated the component yet. Uh, yeah. If you head back um, to the index file, yeah. we can opt into hydration. But I think the on mount is part of the SSR. So let's see. Oh, but I mean, if you're up updating a DOM node, that shouldn't happen on SSR. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's maybe true. Uh, and so we can say true. And this will yes, uh, without quotes. Ah, uh, without quotes. Let's do this. And then we reload, and then yeah, it does work. Nice. And that's cool. So now okay. what we want to do is something a little bit more dramatic. <laughs> oh wow! I definitely nice. need to have some dramatic sound in this stream, you know. <laughs> yes. And this should reload without you manually refreshing. Yes, but oh, yeah, unless we, Stack Blitz doesn't uh, want to. Yeah, yeah so this is no, okay. Because of Stack Blitz. But yeah. now what we want to do is we want to try that automatic um, detection. So this is where we can say on client, is it? No. no. On component uh, visible. On component I'm, visible. We are workshopping these names now that they're released. I could see that being confusing for people since most of them are on client and we no. chose on component because it's like, well, it's not the client that's visible. It's the component that's visible. Mm -hmm. It's easy it to find these things. Yeah, you're right. Uh, with quotes, actually. Ah, uh, you're fun. trying to trick me. <laughs> I think we need to make, I think we need to make true both a string or a Boolean. Yes. Because yes, yes. That, that, that would help the, oh, that would help the, the, sure the, would. Uh, 
<laughs> the junior like me. And so now if I scroll quickly enough, we can see both. Hey, yeah. did you see it? Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, I'm doing it again. Hmm. Let's uh -huh. see that once more feeling. Oh, no, it was too quick this time. Okay. Let, you let me put something even... Uh, yeah. Uh, what can I do to make it even more visible? Yeah, you could put it in a set timeout option. Oh, yeah, that's great. True. Yeah. True. Set timeout. Um, how does this work already? Mm, yeah. I can do so. two seconds like this and then... Yeah. It's, uh, it's uh, the um, reverse. Yeah, exactly. Function first and, and then... First, yeah. And then I can just do this. There we go. And now I go. It's not loaded, but two seconds later, boom. Boom. Bingo. That's cool. And we can really show that like, you can go and spend as much time as you want in the page, but it's only when we go there, two seconds later, boom. It's really cool. It's really cool. So you can, uh, you can just have your JavaScript loaded when it's needed yeah, and not before. I I think like the immediate thing I use this for is comment sections. If you ever like want to throw it on a post, like your post can be 100% static, then you can wait to load discus or whatever crazy third party thing you're using for comments until you actually get to the bottom and want to interact with it. Um, it's just a little bit nicer to get things above the fold. Yeah. And, um, and how precise is the detection? Is like it needs to really be in the viewport or they, there is a little bit of... Uh... Yeah, of it's, um, it's like when a pixel is on the screen, it will do it. Okay. Um, we don't expose like the options that we use. So it's using the intersection observer API and the defaults are just when a pixel's on the screen, go for it. Um, but I could see a future where it's like you pass in the function. I want it to reveal when it's halfway on the screen, when it's like 50 VH or something like that. It should accept any uh, unit that you want to use. So that could be useful, but yeah, it's um, it's just going to load it very quickly because you don't want to see the blob of server stuff for too long, I would think. Um, some people have different opinions, but yeah. Okay. Very, very nice. And this template that we just made here will just load view, right? If we wanted to load uh, React, what would be the... Uh... What would be the process? Oh, yeah. Um, so you can install a renderer for React. And we mentioned on the docs what like the prereqs are. But you can go ahead and install. Well, actually, yeah, go to the docs since it should have a nice copy-paste option. Uh, over on, where? Uh, Here? Uh, quick start should work. Yeah. And then? Yeah, that's the that. And then Slingy so CLI, production builds. Where do we do it? I think we do it here. Yes. Yes. And so I can do this? Yes. Just calling it out since you have some peer depths to also install. Uh, these days, NPM might install them all for you. We just do that as like a sort of safety measure. This is something that could go in the Slinky CLI, you know? Add the render, add React render, yeah. or eject React render, or something that, something like that. And sure then uh, I need to add this. Yep, you import it and throw it in the config. And funny you mentioned the CLI because Astro just added an Astro add command, so you can say like Astro add React, and it'll even do like the code mods to update the config, uh, which I think is pretty neat. Awesome developer experience, you know. Yeah, that's it. You should be okay. ready to use React now. I want to try now. Um, it's great button. <laughs> it's a design button. system, you know. <laughs> it's, a, it's a design system. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> More view. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame you. 
this. And then I can do, um, what should I do? I can, ju I can just do, uh, and just do, I have to do this, right? Uh, no, actually, no? you can omit it. Omit it. And uh, so I can just do um, like this. Yes, a default function. Just to be sure it's uh, the right name. And then what should I do? Uh, can I can just leave it this way if I want to? Sure. Yeah. Uh, and I guess a... we can we can pass uh, properties back, right? Uh, can we try oh, yeah. that? How yeah, we do this? That. We do this like this. Uh, without the word props, uh, since you're already destructuring. So it could. Well, okay. What props do we want? Uh, what are some design systemy props for a button? Yeah. Otherwise, you mean uh, yeah. So we for can styling uh, purposes. Yeah, we, we could do. We... Uh, well, we can put size. Yeah. Or variant sure. or something like that. Or uh, variant. Yeah, that's the word I was Variant for. like primary or secondary <laughs> and so on. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Let's do this. But uh, I'm going to do something simple, guys. Okay. <laughs> sure. Oh, just... <laughs> no, based, based, on, based, based on a variant, we can use a class and you can rely on the class name to, to import okay, the CSS okay, module. Okay, okay. I wanted to have something simple, but uh, yeah, exactly. So how you want to do this exactly? Um, we can import CSS modules in in in, in components. You can import CSS yeah. modules. Uh, okay. Tailwind's also one file away. If you want to go crazy, but go ahead and use modules. Um, like this, I guess, right? I think you'll need a dot slash in front so it doesn't think it's a node it's module. Different. Yeah. And I need to like uh yes. Like this. And then I need to do You're challenging me actually there. <laughs> yeah, and React is probably the toughest one to do like the throw in the ternary for the for the class name. Eh, yeah. That shouldn't be too hard now that we're using modules, I guess. So we uh, could do like a variant like equals something, style right. button. Otherwise, I don't know. <laughs> let's, then... let's start here. Yeah, but there, there was a um, great improvement or... in uh, React 18, um, especially about, um, about the ternary operator because they introduced a, a suspense. Uh, components so now you you were able mm -hmm. to add some kind of fallback like solid do in in this variant syntax so i think the suspense will you know uh, get rid of a lot of different ternary operators just to switch between the loading state and, and final state and so on yes it would be great yeah i could totally see that We know. We know. <laughs> we know. Sure. Stack plates. We know. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, going back onto the top of the page, uh, maybe just uh, right here. Yeah. And heading a, a component. So, one thing that I need to highlight is that I don't have to import anything. I just uh, I just mentioned the files, right? Just mentioned the file. So yeah. this is cool. And then I can say variant here, right, mm -hmm. right off the bat. Sure. And I can say primary. For the moment it does nothing, but, um, and we're gonna do an hydrate. True, you said. Uh, hydrate true, whatever. Doesn't really matter right now. Yeah, not at the and moment. And we and we need to refresh. Yes. And we don't have the button. We don't uh, have the button. Mm, this can be. Mm, mm, um. Demo effect. You've exported. Sure. There's no errors in the console. 
Oh, you don't return. You're using curly braces. Oh, yes. oh yeah. That's what it is. Oh, you know how bad I am. <laughs> I forgot about it. I don't agree about this one. Hello. There we go. Oh, it, it's picking up the styles from... Uh, Oops, sorry, from the, 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 the website already, but we're going to override those things. Some borders, some padding, uh, let's say. Uh, some um, uh, background color. We probably are able to... I feel like hot pink will fit properly into the website. Sure. And then... I oh. think he's overriding. Um, uh, I think it is. Maybe. So yeah. we got the padding, but we don't have the background color. Yes. Yeah. Uh, what can we do? What can we do? Um, oh, specificity. Um, <laughs> yes. yes. We're all expecting for the, the layers specif uh, specification in CSS. It's you know? going to change anything. Uh, without the, yeah, let's find out. No. Gotcha. no. If you throw in an important, or is it working? <laughs> Just to be totally sure yeah. that it actually is working as expected. Let's, let's try it. Uh, before the semicolon. Oh. Yes, important. It's ESM. All right. Oh, no. Whoa. That's strange. Oh. Oh. What? Um, um, let me check. So you said this is really loading? I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. It's really loading. What? Okay. Well, no, maybe maybe it's you'll... background. If you change it to just background, because I know that funky hey. one. Yeah, yeah. this is hard. You don't. Know? Oh, okay, <laughs> that's fine. Ah, oh, it's so I know. Perfect. We should have used background <laughs> color. And we do this, and then. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame it doesn't auto reload. It is it is a okay. nice experience, I swear. Yeah. And so now, but it, it, I guess it's definitely the um, the stack the stack bits uh, yeah, environment. Yeah. That, that, that Cuz we intensive. see the page reloads firing off at the bottom. It just doesn't uh, trigger the server over here. Yeah. So now we can say primer mm, let's say do this, but then we can say if it's button primary. Yeah. Uh, we can do nothing, and <laughs> if it's button <laughs> secondary, I like it. <laughs> we can do background parent, and then border border one. Nice. PX. Solid. Um, a, uh, and we need to. Yeah, probably do the color too. Hmm. Right, and okay. Then we can maybe move with this. Nice. And now I need your help because we need to apply this variance somewhere here. And so we need yeah, to apply. We're going to need a, a fun template string for this i believe so throw on some back ticks and now we can uh no, we can do as simple as this yep we can do uh one of these uh yeah. yes you need to and also your style button yeah, put some dollar signs around style yep. stuff on. Oh, yes. You guys are good. We're not coding. Right. It's easier, you know. <laughs> we don't have the keyboard. <laughs> Let's you, know, spell, you could just say oh, class colon variant, but... Look at know. that. So now that's normal. Uh, so what we do now normal. is we're going to push some... Oh, it should be oh, wait, no, it's it's primary. primary. It should be primary. Um, maybe because um, you have to include the styles. You know, probably it's um, it's a uh, style. Oh, no, no, no! It's because this is uh, completely uh, you. You can't do that. 
Yeah. Because this is CSS oh, we, modules. Oh, okay. So, right. So if you put styles so, bracket. Exactly. And then the things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We are learning every day. So we need to do this. Yeah. Um, I think you need no. brackets around it. Yeah. You, and brackets variant. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure you get like this. I never did that before. No, this is not mm. gonna work. No, no, you can drop the the, uh, do... B, the BTN dot and remove it in the CSS modules too. Okay. Yeah, and just just do a, a primary and secondary. Uh... And the the brackets are nice. I the brackets. So. The brackets should insert the variable value. Yeah. If you do a dot, it won't uh, insert it. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. And in, in the this... CSS modules, we need to. Remove the BDN um, primary. Yeah, just like the this. primary. Exactly. Oh, that does break things, doesn't it's, it? It's a bit cheating, but yeah. But, uh, I wonder, actually, I have to look into this. There's probably a way to get that specific. Uh, you mean keeping the syntax of dot yes, BTN dot I primary and so. so? Yeah, well, we've done it. For sure. So this this boy is primary, and then now we can try with the secondary. Hmm. There we go. Awesome. There it is. Fantastic. That's great. Well, I have to say I'm impressed because um, it works pretty much out of the box. So really nice. Yeah, really exactly. Nice. Well yeah. done, Ben. Yep, been through a lot of heart attacks on stream with things that don't quite work so i'm glad we're at a point where it's like everything's pretty stable and we're pretty sure of how all the primitives work and now it's just adding some polish and serverless support um i think that's going to be the last chapter but yeah yeah uh, with this you can like use it uh, you could also do a production build and deploy it wherever you want uh, it's just a static site at the end of the day hmm. so anywhere that supports just some html files it should be good to go yeah very cool and I, I have a final question, just the last one. Um, let's say all our components are externalized in the design system, so in a dedicated package in NPM. How, how can I import them uh, using Slinkity into my final application? Because right now we're just importing files that are in the includes the folder. Includes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, you got to recreate them in the includes right now, which is not a good answer. Uh, the syntax that I'm working on is an import syntax. So you could say um, import parentheses and then the path to wherever that is. So it could be an NPM package. It could also be something just anywhere in the file system of your project. So includes isn't like the uh, the restriction. But I think it's kind of nice to have the autocomplete where it's like if it's in your includes, just put it. But anything else, use the import wrapper. And then you could use that. So... We'll fill out the syntax, but it's a known issue. Yes, because design systems are packages most of the time. Yes, absolutely. That's awesome. Great. Well, um, when, when you have that, uh, you come back and we do some uh, importing of a backlight design system into a Slinkity. Perfect. Throw For it sure. on a serverless function, ship it. Uh -huh. We'll be good. <laughs> now, that, now that we covered the basics, we can move on for the next one. <laughs> Yeah, it would be great. Um, we're just switching the, the end of the session for today. Um, you mentioned when we prepared the, this session, you mentioned two picks that you, you wanted to add light. Like a um, font, that's it? The AdKit um, ad font's a hyper-legible font? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just threw them on there as like, is this kind of a sick pick section where I can say whatever? Um, this is just a font that we use on Slinkity and also on my personal site. At this point, I just use it everywhere because it's like kind of techy where it could fit into any developer tool that you're trying to build, but it's also built by the Braille Institute. So it's meant to be highly legible and it's also available to use, um, for free in any application you want, either download it or use it on Google fonts. Now, what's the name? So, Can I look for it? Yeah. Uh, it's Atkinson. So A T. K I N S O N. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Font, is it? Yeah. I actually found this in uh, Cassidy Williams' newsletter a couple years ago, and I bookmarked it and finally found a use for it. I was like, oh my God, I'm just using this on everything now. <laughs> it's so simple. Yeah. 
It's really sleek. Yeah. Really great yeah. one. Yeah, great. And you also mentioned another tool, and I'm I'm really, really happy to to mention it to its uh, contrast um, color picker from Mackin. And this is a, this is also a great tool that I also use. Uh, yeah, contrast uh, color picker. Uh, yeah, contrast with an E. I yeah. I don't Contra know if that's like a translation or. Um, in fact, it's it's um, um, it's a contrast. That? Like, like, oh, oh not French. that. Uh, <laughs> is it in French? Okay. Yeah, it's in French. Yeah, Contrast. I mean, the, you're missing the contrast with the yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Let's see. Mm. Oh, uh, wait, where it is? SEO is not great. Yeah, uh, what? I can't a, believe it. Well, okay. I know the URL is uh, yeah, it's, contrastapp.com. Uh, yeah, that's it. So if we jump there, another <laughs> made by not another French. App. It's actually contrastedapp.com. Yeah. I was certain it was .app, but yeah, I guess they didn't snag it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, sounds like you use it. I mean, I've used this for years. It's just so simple. I, even just as a color picker, just grab something and move it somewhere else, and then you get some uh, accessibility in the process. Yeah, exactly. That's going to replace my uh, color picker. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> because, you know, accessibility matters. So yeah, it's exactly. Like, it's a really nice tool. Thanks for motion hit. That's great. Yeah, it's so good. So yeah, um, we are touching the end of the session. So um, thank you very much for being with us today. It was really great to have you and, and make some tests and some demo with Slinkity. It was really, really exciting. Um, I really love this new era of, you know, static site generation, server side rendering, partial hydration. This is just mind blowing and and it's definitely a new way to conceive web apps and web pages and, and thanks for contributing that much to, to this, um, to this, this effort to, yeah, you know, bring a better web for our end users. Yeah, for sure. It feels like the web's coming full circle from like single page app, everything back to, Hey, let's do HTML, everything, you know, it's, it's like PHP 2.0 import components into static pages and add fetchers and server side app whatever you want and uh yeah glad to lead the charge on that That's awesome true. um a final pick for you george for this um end of the session mm, nothing that comes to mind thank thank you very much i think it was very uh very fun and um and i enjoyed uh my first uh my first uh, changes in slinky t that was great nice <laughs> So thank you very much. Thanks everyone for uh, for being with us, and uh, see you next week with a new episode dedicated to uh, state management in design system. So it's gonna be fun too. So um, yeah, see you there, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye, folks. Thank you, everyone. See y'all.